self-compassion and compassion for others. I think the science is so fascinating because often the first thing that will catch my attention is some finding that's like, oh, you're not broken. This is what it means to be human. And then I also get really excited by findings that say, oh, by the way, there's a reason to have hope. There's something mm. you can do. So, you know, that's what I'm after. The, the science that makes us feel like it's okay that we are how we are and also that there's something we can do to be better. everybody, it's Dr. Eric Quorum, founder of AIM7. Welcome back to The Blueprint, where we distill cutting-edge science, leadership, and life skills into simple tactics optimized for your busy lifestyle and goals. I am thrilled today to have health psychologist, Stanford lecturer, and stress expert, Kelly McGonigal, on the show. And today, we're going to talk about the upside of stress. Why stress isn't this scary thing that we need to run from, but it's actually the gateway to growth. We're going to talk about stress mindsets and how you can shift your mindset in very difficult, high pressure situations so that you can win. So let's get right into it. Let's lean in and learn from the best. Kelly, what is the upside of stress? Is stress really something that can be good for you? Yeah, well, so the upside of stress is really about what's in you, not so much about mm -hmm. what's causing the stress. Um, you know, stress can activate your capacity for every human strength from courage, the capacity to learn and grow, compassion for other people, even joy. And so when I talk about the upside of stress, it's really about embracing a mindset that says you might not choose everything that is stressful in your life, but you can choose to allow stress to activate those strengths, that stress can be a catalyst for rising to the challenge, being your best self, connecting with others. And that mindset can allow us to overcome some of the stress avoidance tendencies that can really get in the way of meeting the moment when life is stressful. Yeah, I like how you phrase that, that stress is really a friend of mine, Dr. Alex Arbach, says stress is our brain and our body preparing us to do something effortful. And you have a very similar way yeah. of phrasing it. It's like your body's yes. like ramping you up to do something. You know, I like so how to does... say it's what your brain and it's what arises in your brain and body when something that you care about is at stake. And some part of you believes there's something that you can do to make things better or to move forward or to get what you need or defend what you care about. Um, you don't have a stress response. If there's not some part of you that believes you can take action or make a difference, otherwise you would have a defeat response uh, where you basically you give up and you know, that's so if you're feeling stressed, you should at least take heart in knowing that, okay, there's still hope. <laughs> I like that. So how does our mindset about it impact the way our body responds? Yeah. So most people believe that stress is always harmful. And therefore, when you're stressed, the most important thing you can do is to be less stressed because every second that you are stressed out is toxic, bad for your health, making you the worst version of yourself. And that leads people to do things like sometimes helpful, maybe try to calm down, take a few deep breaths. Sometimes it leads to typically unhelpful things like getting drunk or walking away from a conversation you need to have or giving up on goals that matter to you. Um, so the mindset effect is this interesting evidence, scientific evidence, that when you take a more accepting attitude towards stress, stress is part of life, and also this positive mindset towards stress, that it can bring out what's good in you, that there is always a way to cope, um, that people just cope better, whether we're talking about what your body does in moments of stress to make your stress response physically healthier, to the choices that you make and your ability to take action or get help or make meaning out of stressful situations that you can't control. And often that first step is simply shifting from believing that when you're stressed, it's a sign that there's something wrong with you and you can't handle the reality of your life in this moment to viewing stress as a sign that you care and as a signal to think about what matters most and think about all the different ways that you have to cope. I was reading your book and I believe 
I read a lot on stress. And so um, I was reading your book and I believe there was a section in there where it was talking about instead of viewing stress as something that's uh, bad, it's like reframing that I'm excited about this. Mm -hmm. Was this, yeah. it was like a study that was done mm -hmm. and no joke. I took that and I'm doing a lot of pitching right now for my uh, startup and it was a high pressure situation and I'm in front of a lot of people and I, and right before I went, I'm like, I'm excited to do this. And it was like, all of a sudden I was like, whoop in the zone. It was pretty cool. Like I didn't have to trick myself. I was like, literally like, no, 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 this is a great opportunity. So can you mm -hmm. unpack that study that I was reading? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, this is a great strategy for what psychologists call performance stress. So this is the kind of stress where you, you do want this. It just matters a lot. So it can bring up anxiety or maybe self doubt or a feeling of like a lot of pressure. And in those moments, the stress response that you have is almost always actually giving you energy and almost always it's going to help you be your best self. A lot of people believe that, that you can only be a little bit stressed before the adrenaline or the dopamine or the stress hormones are going to make you, are going to impair your performance. But the research actually shows that being stressed out or being anxious typically helps people do better, especially when they accept that stress as energy they can harness. So um, there are some studies showing that if you tell yourself when you're feeling anxious, if you tell yourself, well, actually I'm feeling excited and it's, it has some element of truth to it. You wouldn't say that in like the worst moment of your life, but in these stressful <laughs> situations that are connected to your goals and to things you care about, where some part of you said, yes, I want to be here. And then, and then some other part of you is, is panicking or, or feeling anxious. It's a great moment to tell yourself you're excited. Uh, what seems to happen is it automatically makes people feel more confident. It shifts you into this approach mode. You're willing to step forward, do what you need to do. You're better able to connect with other people. It also, you know, adjusts your physiology a little bit to give you a challenge response so that you really can perform well under pressure. It just, it sets you up to meet the moment. And there are a number of um, mindset resets like this that depending on the type of stress you're facing can put you into a physiological and mental state that allows you to, uh, to really thrive in that moment. So the excitement one works best for performance stress, but you know, another one that's really helpful is when you realize that you're facing a stress that's bigger than you can handle on your own. So a lot of the stress we face is not rise to the challenge, do it yourself, be the superhero of your own life kind of, you know, stress. It's a, uh, well, I don't know what to do. I need information. I need help. I need a hug. I need a support team. And what you really need is a stress response that includes the biology of nudging you to, to ask for help, the courage to be vulnerable, to be transparent rather than thinking that you have to hide your stress. There's a biology of that too. It's not excitement. It's this, it's this kind of bigger than self stress response where your body and brain say you should not be alone right now. You need, you need mm. to be with other people and people who can help you and people who understand what you're going through. So in those moments, sometimes what you have to do is say, this is bigger than me and I'm not alone. You know, those are a lot of these, it's like you have these little stress mindset mantras that you call on when you need them. And because they're, true, what are some of yours? Well, so I love my heart is in this. That is my version Ooh. of I'm excited um, because often, so I get anxious about a lot of things <laughs> and <laughs> um, anxiety to me often feels like my heart pounding. And it's so easy for me to feel my heart in moments of anxiety and stress. It's really helpful to remind myself of both my physical heart that's working so hard to support me. That's what that pounding heart is. That pounding heart is not trying to undermine me. It's trying to literally give me the energy to do what I need to do. So it's nice to, mm. to feel grateful for that. But also it's my metaphorical heart. It's I'm feeling stressed or anxious because I care, because this matters to me. And I value that about myself. I care a lot about a lot of things and it can make life stressful. And so that's one of the mindset resets that works for me because 
it acknowledges my values. And that's, that's another, um, mindset technique. The values piece is huge. So big. We actually teach values based decision making because when you anchor your actions in your values, you're more likely to pursue when emotion enters the equation. So how do you pull that up? Yeah, my four values are faith, family, excellence, and health. And so when often I'm engaged, there's two values that I'm constantly reminding myself of, or probably three, but like when I'm doing something hard and difficult, that's stretching me in the business perspective, as a former athlete and coach, I remind myself that I want to do things in an excellent manner. And in order to be excellent, like I've got to like take this step. Um, when it comes to my kids and my family and making sacrifices, it's like, I value my family. Right. And then when it comes to things that are moral, it's like, I go back to my faith. But when you're faced with those moments, when emotions ramping up, like for me, I go, that's what I'm, that's who I am. But without that, it's like, you're just like without a rudder. I know. And you know, one of the great stress mindset techniques or strategies is to bring to mind your values in a moment of stress, because I mean, not only will it help guide you, but the things that cause us the most stress are often the things that are most important to us. You know, just as an example, when the, uh, the world Gallup poll asked people in like every country on the planet, did you experience a lot of stress yesterday? And did you experience a lot of love yesterday, laughter yesterday, learning yesterday? Um, having a kid at home was one of the strongest predictors of all of that stuff. And I think that that's Mm. true for many of us, the things that are most important to us in our lives, the roles, the relationships, the goals that we're striving for, they're going to be the things that cause the most stress and that also provide the most meaning. And so when you bring to mind your values in a moment of stress, it's a very real, it's it's a very real resource um, that can allow you to view the stress that you're going through as an opportunity to choose your values. Mm. So good. There's one more I want to talk about, and this is the tend and befriend. Yeah. Um, I think that, you know, human touch is so important. Can you double click on that for us? Kind of pull on that thread on like why (laughs) we need to do this. Yeah. I mean, so one of the things that is true about human beings is we can't survive on our own. So biologically, psychologically, we are built to rely on other people. And it's really hard for a lot of us uh, to embrace that interdependence. So you might be like me and feel like you don't wanna be a burden on anyone. You might be like a lot of people and feel like you don't want to show your weakness, that it might might put you at risk or might make people judge you. Um, There can be a belief that you just should be able to do everything on your own. And so part of a mindset that makes you good at stress is being able to embrace this reliance we have on other people when the situation calls for it. So you you mentioned human touch, that's part of it, but it's also, it's every way that we can depend on others, whether it's asking for help, whether it's having people physically present with us, um, whether it's having people in our lives who will make jokes and create joy and give us something to look forward to when life is stressful. I mean, there's so many ways that, that other people can help us through. Um, and you can do, you can do small actions that just embrace that mindset and like telling yourself that you're excited when you're stressed out, it can kick off this cascade of changes in your body and brain that help you be good at stress and that help you reach out. So one interesting study, um, actually had people send a supportive text message to somebody else when they were feeling stressed. So rather than, than saying like, okay, who can I ask for help? And like send a text saying, I'm really struggling right now. Help me. It's it's easier for a lot of people to actually reach out to someone else and say something kind or encouraging to somebody who might need it that day. And doing that changes your own physiology to activate the biology of hope, encourage and make you more open to other people. It creates this kind of Mm. upward spiral. Physical touch can do the same thing too. 
um, and that it can shift us into a state that makes us more willing to um, to be to have the courage of vulnerability. I love this. Your perspective on things is just phenomenal. It's not just your perspective. I mean, you bring it to light, but it's also grounded in in good quality literature. But yeah. literature it's is stale, and it's human too. I mean, I think yeah. what's so great is I I look to just science, like your cat. That's that's pride on the cat. Uh, my cat <laughs> is one of the ways that I deal with stress. Um, there there are some studies showing that if you gaze into the eyes of your pet it releases oxytocin in both you and your mm. pet. And oxytocin is, is one of those stress hormones that encourages us to connect with others. So if you're looking for another strategy and you happen to have an animal around, I, it's not just the, the eye gazing. I mean, my cat actually will just blink at me lovingly, which is nice, but petting <laughs> works too. <laughs> Playing <laughs> works too, not just with animals, but with humans. Absolutely. Uh, sorry, I derailed you there. Uh, but <laughs> well, I was going to say that no. I, I look to science for for practical strategy and also um, self compassion and compassion for others. I think the science is so fascinating because often the first thing that will catch my attention is some finding that's like, "Oh, you're not broken. This is what it means to be human." And then I also get really excited by findings that say, "Oh, by the way, there's a reason to have hope. There's something mm. you can do." So you know, that's what I'm after. The, the science that makes us feel like it's okay that we are how we are and also that there's something we can do to be better. Absolutely. And if you're listening to this and you're like, this is a wonderful message, get her book, The Upside of Stress. I went through all three of them that we're going to talk about on these episodes. Phenomenal book. You make it so practical. You make stress feel, you disarm it. And you teach us how to leverage it. And so I really appreciate the work that you're doing. Uh, there's people need this. So we'll put the link in the show notes. Um, if people want to follow you, where should they find you? I'm on Instagram as Kelly Marie McGonigal. All right. Well, we'll direct people there. Thank you so much. Thank you for joining me on today's show. And if you learned something new about stress, Please share this episode with a friend. You never know what the impact could be on their life. Also, hit that subscribe button so you never miss another episode. I appreciate you. Thank you for joining us today, and I'll catch you on the next episode.